Yo, what's up, guys? It's your. Oh, look. Time for another unboxing. I'm kidding, obviously. This has already been opened. That was a part for the Moto G5S Plus, which, by the way, there's gonna be a video coming out on that phone very soon. But besides that, today we're gonna be doing another collection video because I haven't done one of those in a very long time and I want to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So, this collection video is just going to be all of my Samsung phones. Um, so, starting off, I'm not going to say this at the end this time, I'm just going to say it in the beginning. Um, I'm recording on my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus on Sprint. This is running Android Pie, and there's really nothing too special about it. Um, it's still going, it's still working, it's just super scratched up and now cracked on the front. Soon I want to get an S10 or something like that, I don't know, I'll see, but anyways, on Android Pie it actually runs very well, I love multitasking on this thing by the way. But yeah, um, if you couldn't tell already, I say this in pretty much every single video, or at least collection video that I do. I am recording on that phone right now, and I'm actually using my DJI Osmo Mobile 2 this time, um, so that's nice. I haven't used this thing in a very long time. So yeah, anyways, uh, besides the S9 Plus, I think I'm going to start off with the dumb phones. I like to call them dumb because <laughs> they're not smart. Ha 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 ha. First up, we have a first generation Samsung Elias. This has a broken front screen. I got this at a Goodwill outlet. I don't remember where. Oh, no, never mind. I do. It was in Colorado where I got this at a Goodwill outlet. And yeah, this one works totally fine. I'll show you right now. Cool thing about these is that they also flip out like this, which is really unique. So yeah, most of these are charged, by the way. Um, which is good, I made sure to charge a lot of them. Oh my god, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off, but yeah, there's that one. Here we have this thing, I don't know where the back cover went, it's been missing for a while now and I just really don't know where it went. I've tried finding it multiple times, but I can't. This is whatever, whatever it is, I don't, I don't know. It should say it, if not, then I'll take the battery out, and it doesn't look good. It's a Samsung... SGH S125G. Next up is this thing. I don't really know what it is. Hold on. This is an SCH R375C. It works, but it doesn't have a battery in it. And honestly, I just don't feel like. Hold on. Hold on. There's a battery right here. I don't know if this one's charged though. Nope. No, it's not. Okay. Well, that one's just <laughs> gonna be dead. Anyways, next up we have this thing. It is an SCA U340, and it works. I charged this one up, I know that for a fact. So, let's, oh, I almost dropped it. Let's go ahead and power this one on. As you see, it works. Both screens. Uh, are you dead? Bro, well, I guess that one's, <laughs> that one's already dead. That one must have the bad battery, I guess, but. Uh, does this one even have a battery? This one doesn't have a battery, but this was basically my first phone uh, ever. It's a GTE 1080W. It works. It just doesn't have a battery in it, and I don't feel like finding a battery. So yeah, let's just get all the non-battery ones done for now. Here is an SGH T239. It works, just didn't have a battery, like I just said. So yeah, there's that one. This one, this is an S... GHT199. It's on T-Mobile. It works. Just doesn't have a battery and a back cover. This one is one of the two SGHT659s that I have. This one is faulty. Well, this one works, but I don't think I charged this one up, so I'm just gonna count. Oh, I did. Alright, well, Yeah, this one works. And it works totally fine other than that spot on the LCD right there. So yeah, there's that. Next up we have this. Mobile. Good. Yay. Okay, go. Anyways, here we have a Sprint Samsung, whatever the heck. It's an SPH M300. It has a very crappy screen, but it works. It, yeah, it, you can automatically tell that it has just a god awful screen. But yeah, it looks like it should have a better screen, but it doesn't, unfortunately. So yeah. Is this one? Oh, it's not. Okay, cool. What the? Mm. Okay. Turn on. There we go. I like that animation. Brings back memories. Here we have an LG. I'm not LG. <laughs> Samsung 
Uh, this is an SCH U30 or no U360. I almost said U36C. Um, wow, I just tossed that. <laughs> this one works, and I charged this one up. So if it doesn't turn on, I'm going to flip. It's not turning on. I'm gonna flip. I flipped. Here we have a foreign phone. I don't know what this is. Uh, guess I can take off the back cover to find out. It is a GTE 360, or no, 3300L, and it works. It's basically the same thing as this one right here, except this one doesn't have a camera, and this one's smaller. It's weird. But yeah, this one does have a back cover as well as a battery, obviously, so that means I can turn it on if I can get the back cover all the way on, because OCD. Okay. There we go. Turns on. This is a very god-awful camera. It's on Intel, as you can see. So, yeah, there's that. Decent little phone. It's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. Um, here we have a Samsung Rugby two or something, I can't remember, but I don't feel like taking off this back actually because it's a pain in the butt to get off, but it works. See my jacket in the background. It's on AT&T, works totally fine. Tiny bit beat up from a video I did uh, a long time ago, but yeah, it's still, it's still going, which is really good. So yeah, as you can see, it works. Mm, there we go. Wow, alright. Here we have this little thing. I don't know what this is at all. It's some sort of Samsung phone on TELUS, but it's really beat up. This screen is cracked, unfortunately, and I cannot get it to turn on at all. But it's still such a really cool phone. Um, if anyone knows what this is, tell me down in the comment section, because I do not know what this is at all, and I would love to know, because I want to get one of these that works. So, yeah, here we have a T-Mobile Samsung Gravity 2. This one works, just doesn't have a battery. Same with this one. This one also doesn't have a battery, but this one also works as well. And it's the same thing as Samsung Gravity 2. Speaking of Samsung Gravities, here's a Gravity 1, and this one should have a battery in it, but I don't know. It doesn't have a battery in it. Alright, this one doesn't have a battery in it, but it's still a pretty cool phone. Um... I actually like this one over the other one, to be honest, in terms of design at, at least, but, um, yeah. Here we have a Samsung Intensity one, I think, is what it's called, I don't know. But this one works, same with my other Intensity one right here, which also works. Here we have an Intensity 2, yes, Intensity 2. This one works, it'll be fine. Here we have a semi-functional intensity to which has a bad LCD. This is cracked. It, the hinge is messed up. There's no keyboard. It's basically just a parts phone at this point. Um, even though it's probably never going to be used for parts. But yeah. Here's a really cool phone. This is a Samsung... Uh, crap, I don't know what this is. It's Samsung SGH S390G. And this is a cool phone because it has Wi-Fi. Even though it's a really generic, crappy trash phone, it still has Wi-Fi. Why isn't this one turning? Okay, well, I guess I drained the battery on that one messing around. But I swear to God, I charged that one. Anyways, um, here we have this phone. It is a Samsung SCH U660. And it works totally fine. And as you can see, it turns on. Works totally fine. So yeah, there's that one. We are almost done with the dumb phones. Um, here we have the Samsung Elias 2. Another really, really cool phone, except unfortunately, I don't know where the back went. It also randomly disappeared. The keyboard it uses electronic ink, at least that's what you call it. Um, think of it as a Kindle, because it's basically the exact same. At least the screen. Or, not the screen, but the keyboard. Uh, the button to turn it on is actually right here. Although, when it's turned on, you can turn it off with the end button. Um, oh my god, why isn't this one charged? That sucks. Okay, well, a lot of these I charged 
like a week ago getting ready for this video so and a lot i know a lot of them have really bad batteries so i apologize but i've shown that one in uh earlier collection videos so i know you guys have already seen it here is a phone that i ran over with my mom's car for this one doesn't have a battery uh this is an sgh a 157v it works totally fine and uh yeah go on there we go there's that here we have this phone this one doesn't have a battery it is a SGHT229. Works as well, just needs a battery like every single other one of these phones, I swear. Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our video first look and a quick review of the Elec Mall Digital MP4 player. Compared to the same version produced by A Steels, I think this one is slightly better because it isn't a carbon copy of the iPod Nano 3rd generation. For instance, on the bottom you'll see it uses a mini USB uh, standard port for charging and syncing with a computer, Mac or PC, as opposed to using the 30 pin connector that was uh, used by Apple. So this one at least has its own uh, flair and its own design going on and it's not completely a replica. It also has a micro SD card slot which allows you to expand the built-in memory. That's a nice feature to have. Uh, it's not completely self-contained and self-sealed. So this version here sells on Amazon for about 35 bucks. It isn't too expensive. The back also features a metal surface which is extremely shiny, attracts a lot of fingerprints and also dust, uh, just like on the original iPod. I think it looks pretty classy and feels nice in the hand as well. With that being said, this version comes with 32 gigs of built-in flash storage, but um, the flash storage is actually stored on the, the memory card. Uh, it's a 32 gig card that you get as part of the purchase. So if you take that out and you swap it out with a 64 gig, unfortunately there isn't 32 gigs already on board. So that's something to quickly take note of. Otherwise, the bottom also features a 3.5mm headphone jack and a power on off switch. The front features a 1.8 inch TFT LCD display. As you can see here, they went with their own custom user interface as opposed to uh, imitating the iPod Nano. So that is also nice to see. We would like to see a bit of originality here and there. Uh, the scroll here, again, it uses just four, com fleet four keys. The center key actually doesn't do much. Uh, it actually isn't a okay key, so it takes a little bit of getting used to. It also is in a capacitive sensor so you can't scroll your wheel your way around you have to actually tap on the individual buttons otherwise on the very top there is a battery status icon charging this takes roughly two hours to complete and afterwards it should last you for about two to three weeks before you need to recharge it again with sporadic usage in between so as you can see here, the menu here just goes left and right and it matches up with the left and right keys down below. So everything is pretty intuitive and easy to navigate. There's a basic um, music player on board which supports uh, popular files like MP3, WMA, and you can see that sometimes foreign text does not show up properly, but at least you have access to things like equalizers on the top, the volume, it gets pretty loud, audio quality is crisp, you can select things like looping, uh, the screen times out after a few seconds to save on the battery, it also shows the file compression of format, the size, and also the amount of time remaining. I will say though that this particular MP3 MP4 player doesn't have cover art support, so that's something to quickly take into consideration, but otherwise it has pretty good audio performance. Next, there's a, a digital uh, video player on board, hence the MP4 uh, naming, but it only supports uh, quite limited file formats. Uh, the, the actual built-in uh, video that you see here isn't the most uh, crisp looking in the world and also uses its own proprietary uh, kind of format that you have to convert your videos into if you have mp4 videos for instance so it's not the most uh, easy thing in the world especially since there isn't a driver included as part of the package you get just a micro usb cable you get a pair of uh, headphones that sound okay they're not too terrible uh, an instruction manual and that's it so for conversion you have to kind of google it and search it up yourself as you can see it has a decent uh, video playback experience frame rates are nice, uh, the screen is decently bright, but uh, view angles aren't great. Some other features on this include a digital voice recorder. It uses a microphone located on the very back of the unit to capture uh, some sound clips, so you can use it for some quick voice memos, maybe a to-do list, uh, maybe at some meetings, or even if you want to do a bit of singing. However, I will say that the, the microphone on here isn't the best in the world, and the quality could be better. It isn't noise canceling, so this does quite a bit of ambient background noise uh, 
uh, such as if you move the uh, actual MP4 player around too fast, the wind catches in the mic and creates this, this distortion. So there isn't really a filter to protect it. Um, so that's something to quickly note. Uh, FM radio also uses the antenna from a inserted 3.5mm headphone jack. It allows you to play back a decent amount of channels, at least here in the Seattle region when we tested it. Uh, you can also tap on the skip track controls and hold on it for a few seconds to automatically scan through the strongest channels in terms of reception. Uh, otherwise, it's a decent radio, but it's not an HD radio or anything like that. There's also a basic uh, photo viewer on board, so you can use it to look at some JPEG images, use it as a digital photo frame of sorts or a photo keychain. You can see here that it also shows. Once again, we have uh, the display, which is fairly bright, but if you tilt it, you can see how colors do get washed out and inverted quite easily. Something to quickly note, and probably an area where the manufacturer was able to save on the cost. System settings allows you to go through and do things like the LCD, when it times out, languages that you can go through, memory information, system time and date, the firmware, so on and so forth. So tapping on menu for a few seconds, that takes us back out once more. There's a basic text reader. We like how on this version it isn't advertised as an ebook reader because that's a bit misleading. Uh, it shows off text files just fine, but it's basically rows and rows of text. Uh, formatting is a little weak. Uh, same thing with uh, what can be said about paragraphs and page breaks, they don't really show up. So you have to do a lot of scrolling up and down to get through not even too much text. So it's not as great as an ebook reader, of course, just because the screen is so limited. But it will work if you want to store some addresses and contacts and phone numbers. Uh, there's a shift for that. And that's all. There are no preloaded games that you get on this particular version of the MP4 player, unlike some other generic builds you've seen in the past. So that's an extra that isn't uh, available here. However, overall, we do really like the uh, e like Mall version of the show MP4 player because despite kind of looking at like the third generation iPod Nano, the interface here makes a lot more sense just because the button placement corresponds with the actual on-screen indicators. And we like the presence of an expansion uh, micro SD card slot as well as the manual slot uh, and also a standard menu as well for syncing information. Construction quality is good, the battery life is good, but it does again 14 days without having to recharge it again. And overall the value here in terms of the price point is also quite fair. Alright, so just taking a look at the design of the S5 next. Uh, the body of the MP3 player is constructed predominantly out of aluminum. In fact, it's a one-piece unibody finish around the edges. So as a whole, it remains quite sturdy and it feels more expensive than the price would suggest. Etched into the metal with access to the base play logo in addition to some basic specs, and on the side, there's access to dedicated volume keys which are tactile and responsive. The bottom features access to the micro USB port for charging, a microphone for voice recording, and also a 3.5 millimeter headphone port. The other side features a power key. It also acts as a lock screen key when you want to hold on it uh, and prevent anything from being triggered in your pocket or in your jeans. Nothing else on the top, and the front just features the display which measures in at roughly 1.5 inches, and there's also the controls for up, down, left, and right, and play, pause, and back. Now these are not touch sensitive keys, uh, you know, kind of like the iPod, instead they're actually physical buttons, so you can mechanically press them down and have a tactile click to them whenever you're tapping on something. Now these keys aren't backlit, so uh, a little bit harder to see under very dark environments, but overall they're very easy to master. The surface of the MP4 player is made out of plastic, but it feels relatively sturdy and well constructed. So turning the unit on, the first thing that we'll notice is that the UI has been completely redesigned from the ground up. It's different from other generic and low-cost MP3 players we've seen in the past, and that's a good thing. So taking a look at the music player first, you can see that it displays all your um, tracks in a list format, and then tapping on play, it also shows your cover art, which is actually pretty handy. So I can tap on play, and it's also going to show some basic info scrolling on the bottom. I can take a look at my equalizer settings, in addition to repeat settings, and of course I can skip, play, pause, as well as scrub the track just by holding down the corresponding key, and it's actually fairly sensitive and easy to access. As a whole, it remains pretty good even for longer audiobooks, and I can easily pause a portion of the uh, track, and it remembers its location fairly well the next time when I power the unit on again. If I tap on the volume keys on the sides, you can see the animation that the music player makes when changing the volume, and it's uh, very cool. It, it almost looks like this mechanical wheel that's turning. So going back now, 
it does support the ability for you to play back music while you're also, let's say, looking at images or reading an ebook. So there's a bit of multitasking functionality. And next, we have the file manager, and you can see it just shows all your images as well as videos in this one list format uh, so that you can more easily navigate through things. And then of course in our tools, we have the aforementioned ebook reader. It just shows up text, so it's going to be line by line. I wouldn't really consider this a true ebook reader, it's more of a text reader. So if you have some basic information like contact info, an address, or a memo, it's easy to load in here and see it back, but I wouldn't recommend reading longer passages or books. Uh, FM radio, what's kind of interesting is that the antenna is actually integrated. So for once, you don't have to plug in headphones to act as the antenna. With that being said, the S5 does not have a built-in speaker, so if you want to listen to sound, so that's a bass play S5. Overall, I would say it's a solidly performing lossless sound MP3 player. It has actually a fairly ergonomic set of controls at a low price point. The sound quality is good, and the menu interface is fairly attractive, and you get a bunch of extras as well, including the ability to read back text, have an FM radio, a sound recorder, and also play back quick movies as well as photos when on the go. The build quality here is excellent since it's crafted out of a one-piece aluminum finish, and again, it just seems to work right out of the box without too many hassles. I like, again, some of the UI details that they built in here that sets it apart from other generic low-cost MP3 players that I've seen in the past. So overall, if you're in the market for a low-cost MP3 player that you would purchase, uh, for using at the gym, maybe as a dedicated player because you don't want to lose your phone, you want to give this to a kid, or just really enjoy your music and consider something that's slightly better in terms of audio quality than a cheaper, uh, more generic uh, uh, player you may already have, this is certainly a nice upgrade in that sense.